Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. And once again, we have no shortage of content for this video. There's just so much stuff going on right now. We have blizzard warnings, winter storm warnings, a big system in the Great Lakes region that's eventually going to affect the mid-Atlantic and northeast region of the United States. And then beyond that, the models are finally starting to agree that we are entering a very active pattern for the latter half of January. And just a ton of people, especially in the eastern part of the United States, are going to be primed for multiple opportunities at big snowstorms as we we go into the future. Once again, I do videos like this almost every single day, so make sure you are subscribed to this channel so we can track these storms together. And now let's get into talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old map of the United States of America. And what we're looking at here is watches and warnings that are currently in effect from the National Weather Service. Look at this big old bronze area. These are high wind warnings. We talked a lot yesterday about all the winds that are going through the Great Plains all the way down into Oklahoma and Texas. Some places saw well over 90 mile an hour wind gusts last night and the winds are still roaring today, especially in Nebraska and South Dakota. And we've got high wind advisories all the way down into central Texas. So it's, it's really windy on that side of the low pressure system. Now over here in eastern South Dakota, a little bit of Nebraska, Iowa, and southwestern uh, Minnesota, we have blizzard warnings. That's what those orange tents are. You see that little bit of pink? That's winter storm warnings. And then we have winter weather advisories and watches all for this area right here. I expect these to be expanded a little bit further to the south and east as we go later on into tonight. But yeah, this is a real full-on blizzard guys and the snow showers and stuff are really starting to get together right now we can take a look at that on the radar okay here we are zoomed in on Minneapolis Minnesota you can see those snow showers are really starting to ramp up this started out as a little bit of a rainstorm in the beginning but now that cold air is getting in there and everybody's getting in on some heavy snow in Minneapolis Brooklyn Park all the way down south into Bloomington it is coming down at a good clip now the majority of the heavy snow and the blizzard conditions are going to take place southwest of here but this is the beginning stage of this storm. We're going to watch this unfold overnight. And I'm telling you, as this low pressure system oscillates right here in the middle of the United States, it's going to do some crazy interesting stuff. We can take a better look at that on the weather models. Okay, here's our high resolution NAM model. We're going to look at this region by region as we go forward. Let's start off by looking at our blizzard in Iowa and Minnesota. Check this out. That low pressure system is just going to sit there. We're all the way at 9 p.m. tonight. We've got a 993 millibar low pressure system in the northeastern part of Iowa. And it just kind of hangs out as we go forward forward. Here we are at 4 or 5 a.m. That's when those really intense snow bands are going to start coming up. You can see we got these ISO bars really close together right here. That means there's going to be high winds. You can expect gusts over 50 miles an hour in some of these places. And that's why those blizzard warnings are issued only for this area. It's still going to be snowing really hard in central Wisconsin, but those winds aren't going to be as strong for you. And you got to have really strong winds for it to actually be called a blizzard. But yeah, as we go on into 6 a.m., 7 a.m., that snow is just still coming down. It's going to be extremely interesting to see who gets the most snow in western Iowa. There will probably be one or two really big, strong, intense bands that show up, and I'm thinking that it'll probably be closer to the actual low pressure system, the center, but this model here is kind of showing a broad swath all the way through pretty much all of western Iowa, southern Minnesota, northern Missouri, but I wouldn't be surprised if we get a little bit more of a localized band that really drops some heavy totals right in central Iowa. And as we play that on forward watch, it just cranks on up. There goes the snow, and then if we play this on out, watch the Rocky Mountains over here. We've got a little bit of warm air advection. And I think that means we're going to have a pretty quick warm up in this part of the country. But yeah, check out all that snow. Let's look at snow totals here. Okay, putting our snow totals map into motion. Check it out. It just blows up, son. And you can see you can see the circulation of this system in the snow totals. Look at the, the snow squalls down here. You can actually see it painted in the direction of the circulation. That's crazy. And as you can see here, southern Minnesota has a broad area where you can see over a 11, 12 inches of snow. North Central and Western Iowa, everybody's over six inches. But yeah, not astronomical totals for this area of the country. I mean, these guys are used to seeing this kind of stuff. But what makes this special, it's just such a powerful system with so much cold air aloft. You're gonna have the high winds, you're gonna have instability. So like those snow bands are really gonna take off and somebody's gonna get dumped on with snow. Here we go, we're flipping over to the Ohio Valley region now. Let's watch what kind of effects this is gonna have on this area. Here we are, 8 a.m. tomorrow, we've got a cold front moving through Ohio, Kentucky, all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. This is going to bring along with it an area of rain showers. I don't think they'll be too intense, but on the back end, it will start switching over to snow as we get that cold air really punching in. You can see cold air advection here. That's going to keep moving east, and then that's going to switch over to all snow in the mountains of West Virginia, Virginia, and a little bit of North Carolina. And then as you can see here, we try to get another low pressure system. There's a couple that try to form on that cold front, and that's what's really going to affect the northeastern part of the United States. You can 
can see already western Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh's getting dumped on by snow. It's gonna be brief though as it goes by and then look at this. You see all this? These are snow squalls. Let me just paint this. Let me paint this picture for you, baby. Look at the circulation here of these snow squalls. This is going to be an extremely interesting event to watch unfold. What we're looking at here is a similar system to what we would see in the spring where you get isolated showers and thunderstorms that pop up, but it's happening in winter with a ton of cold air aloft. So we're gonna see snow squalls. We're gonna see snow thunderstorms pop up from this storm. I mean, Reed Timmer said there's a chance we could see snow nados. <laughs> No, but for real, these are gonna be some intense snow squalls as we go forward. Real quick, let me show you another map. This is the surface cape. This is convective energy. We look at this in the summertime and the springtime to predict severe weather, okay? This is how much energy is in the atmosphere for severe weather to form. And as we put this into motion, here we are at 4 p.m. tomorrow. We have 200 joules per kilogram of surface-based cape. Now that's not a lot if we were actually talking about severe weather, but when it comes to snow squalls, I really do think we're gonna see some intense snow squalls in Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, Eastern Missouri, even a little bit of Tennessee and Ohio. You guys, I mean, it's gonna be fun to watch. Lay this on out as we get back into the heating of the day on the 16th, Southeastern Ohio, Eastern Kentucky, Eastern Tennessee, all through West Virginia. These are gonna be the kind of snow squalls where it's literally, it's sunny outside. Next thing you know, you see a dark cloud coming at you and you're like, what? And then boom, it starts pouring the snow. If you've never been in a snow squall before, it'll probably be some of the heaviest snow you've ever seen. And then it's gonna move by, the sun's gonna come back out and all the snow's gonna melt and it's <laughs> You may hear a clap of thunder or two. You see, I live in this area right here. I'm gonna drive out and try to intercept one and get some good video footage. I'll share it with you guys. So other than the snow squalls in Illinois, Indiana, Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, West Virginia, and Virginia, we're gonna see a pretty stationary band of snow up here in Northern Michigan, uh, even in the upper peninsula of Michigan, all the way into Wisconsin. And that's gonna stick around for a little while and drop some snow on you guys. And then as we go on out, it's still there all the way on the 16th of January, but it starts to lit up. Okay, let's play that snowfall map out. Let's see who's gonna get the most snow. All right, so like I was talking about, up here in Michigan, all the way through Wisconsin, you guys can see two to four inches of snow real easy. There will be a couple places where six inches or more line up. Down here through the Appalachian Mountains, plenty of areas are gonna see more than four inches of snow. If you're really high up, I mean, you can see who knows, eight inches. You guys always get all the snow. And then we just have this big area down here where it's gonna be Snow Squall City, baby. Anywhere in this whole area, you can see up to three inches of snow, but it's gonna be quick and it's probably gonna melt quick. All right, let's move on up northeast. Let's take a look at this storm as it comes in. Southeastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, uh, New York City. A lot of you guys are gonna be stuck in rain town, but in central Pennsylvania, upstate New York, all the way up through here, you guys, um, points north, this is gonna be uh, a pretty good snow system for you guys. As you can see here, the low pressure system comes right up the coast and we've got heavy snow up here in Canada. And then as we push that on, Boston, you're all rain. Pretty much all of Massachusetts, Rhode Island and Connecticut is all rain. And then as we keep on going, looks like Northern Maine's gonna get a pretty good uh, wintry mess out of this. Let's just go ahead and look at snow totals. Okay, we're putting it into motion now. Who's gonna get the most snow in the Northeast? Looks like the mountains have a couple areas where they could see over a foot of snow, possibly more. The real winners here are gonna be upstate New York, all the way into western Pennsylvania. Two, three, four inches of snow, easy. There will be a couple places off the lake here that can see over 10 inches of snow. Near Syracuse, a lot of you guys in upstate New York, um, five, six inches of snow is easy once this is all said and done. Okay, let's zoom out here. We're looking at the whole United States again. This is the Euro model. Let's put it into motion. Let's watch our storm. Let's see what she does. Here we go. We're cranking up a blizzard right now for Iowa and Minnesota. Here's that cold front. Watch for another low pressure system to try to spin up some snow. And there it is. We're at 7 a.m. on the 16th. And we've got a little bit of snow trying to make it as far south as into Connecticut. And then as we keep it going, there it goes. It goes out to sea. Once again, keep your eye on the Ohio Valley region. You can see those snow squalls really ramp up and we're going to have off and on snow all the way through like Tuesday. And then once our first storm spirals out of here, watch this. You're going to see some bubbling up of some moisture down there by Texas. And let's see what the Euro does with that. Okay, here we go. Here we are at 1 p.m. on January 21st. We've got a low pressure system in southwestern Missouri, just kicking up a ton of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, meeting up with that cold air, bringing heavy snow to Kansas, Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, northeastern Ohio, Pennsylvania. And then as we keep it going, it really deepens right here, bringing down a really sharp cold 
cold front with some more cold air behind it. If this verifies, Indiana, you're going to get your snow. And then let's keep on playing it. We've got snow from northern Pennsylvania all the way to Boston and north. And then if we play it forward a little bit, this energy gets transferred over here. We've got heavy snow for Connecticut, pretty much all of Massachusetts except for Cape Cod, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. You guys are getting in on the snow. And then that goes out. Last frame on the 24th of January, another big storm is forming out here in Oklahoma. And basically what this tells me is that this is going to set up the stage for that very active pattern that I've been going on and on about. Okay, let's go ahead and look all the way out on the 12Z GFS. Here's our first storm. It is going to get out of here by around Monday, January 18th, and that's going to set the stage for that bubbling up down here in Texas. And it actually has another little low pressure system up here that's going to try to bring some snow to the northeast. But all eyes are down here. Let's check it out. Let's watch what happens with it. It sends the moisture up. It connects with the cold air a little bit further north than the Euro does. You can see here we've got heavy snow in northern Missouri, southern Iowa, Indiana, Illinois, and that's just going to shoot it directly east. Northern Ohio, southern Michigan, a lot of Pennsylvania and New York, northern New Jersey, Connecticut, Rhode Island. You guys get some snow with this system. Now, this is highly contested in the model world. Um, there's a very good chance that this goes a little bit further south than this, and we'll have to keep our eye on this because I believe this has the opportunity to become a pretty big storm for a lot of people. And then as we go on beyond that, do we have anything else? Yes, we do. Sunday, January 24th, here's that other storm. The Euro started to show like the beginning signs of this at the last frame. We got a low pressure system in Tennessee that's going to go up the Appalachian Mountains and bring heavy snow to northern Pennsylvania, southern New York right here. And then that goes pretty much directly east off the coast, bringing a really good snowstorm to New York City, Boston, Hartford, Connecticut, northern New Jersey. You guys could get some snow. And then as we play that on out, that goes right out to sea and we still have our cold air right here. And check it out. We got a little interesting something happening right here in the Rocky Mountains. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw that slide south and meet with some Gulf moisture. There we go. What's going to happen next? Who's going to be in Snowtown, baby? Now, if you remember, both of the other storms went directly east. We have a very intense jet stream just sliding everything through. If that's what happens with this one, we're talking about a, you know, pretty rare southern slider storm. All right, let's put it into motion. Looky here. Ice all the way down into Louisiana. We've got snow in Mississippi, Alabama, all the way into Atlanta, Georgia. And then we've got snow in North and South Carolina. How nice would that be? That would make a lot of people happy. Don't get too excited yet, but it's here. It could happen. And then that goes out to sea and look, son, on the last frame of the GFS, another big southern storm is for warming up. Long story short, we're entering a very active pattern. I called it. You can't say I didn't. And just for fun, we're going to take a look at those snow to toe falls. <laughs> those snow to toe falls. <laughs> those total snowfall numbers. And as you can see here, the big winners are Northern Pennsylvania and Northwestern New York. A couple areas in there that could see over two feet of snow. And, and this is over the next two weeks or so. So got a lot of people out here in the Midwest that are getting some snow, more snow for Oklahoma and uh, Texas. You can see that little streak of a storm that went through all the way into South Carolina and North Carolina. Once again, this is long range La La Land forecasting. We're just trying to pinpoint what's happening with the pattern, the exact placement of the snowfall isn't, you know, you know, we shouldn't pay too much attention to it. For example, just one run ago, this is the 12Z. Let's see what the 6Z was showing. The 6Z has a big hole here in southeastern Pennsylvania. The 0Z has a big plane storm moving through. This would be cool for a lot of snow starved people. Central Missouri getting two feet. All of Kansas getting buried with over 10 inches of snow. And then all the way back at the 18Z run, this was also seeing a plane storm that was moving into the Ohio Valley. Big bullseye with over 30 inches of snow right here. And then back to the newest data here, you can see this changes a lot. But what doesn't change a lot is my confidence that we're going to see something, all right? Once we get past this storm right here and we really start to see that second storm form up on the 20th, we're going to get a much better idea on how the rest of these storms are going to play out. No matter what, I believe that somebody on the East Coast is going to get a really good snow before we get into February and we're going to have a good two or three week period where it's just snowstorm after snowstorm that we're watching. It's going to be fun. Make sure you are subscribed to this channel. I I really appreciate everybody that's been watching the videos and subscribing and stuff. The channel is literally popping off. I try to remember where everybody lives so I can, you know,
you know, remember to, to pinpoint on that area and talk about it more. If you haven't said yet, leave down in the comments where you're from. So maybe I can pay a little bit more attention to that area as we go into future videos. I really appreciate all the love and support and I'm going to keep doing this. We, this is the 11th video in the row now. I'm going to post every day for as long as I can. And then this spring we are going storm chasing and I'm going to take you guys with me and we're going to vlog the whole thing. We're going to try to get as close to some tornadoes as we possibly can. But for now, that's all I got for you and I will see you in the next one. Okay guys, goodbye. Woo!